Hi guys, it's Jess here. Um, today I want to talk to you about one of the most common problems in jam and pickle making, and that is spoilage. How often have you gone to get a lovely pot of your homemade jam or pickle and opened it up, only to be confronted with a horrible green mat all over the surface? It's no good for anything, it's got to go in the rubbish bin. And what a disappointment that is at the time and also all the effort that's gone into manufacturing it and the love and care that you've used to prepare the pickle or the jam has all gone to waste. Well I can honestly say that in all the time that I've been making pickles and jams I have not had a single pot of either go off on me. And I've got some plum jam stored over in my cupboards over there that is at least two seasons old and I guarantee you if I opened it now there would not be a single blemish on the surface. And the reason for that is that I make sure that I clean my jars scrupulously and then I make sure I sterilise them. I'm a microbiologist, um, I've got a degree in microbiology, so I know all about how, how to get rid of fungus and bacteria. And today I'm going to show you an easy kitchen method of being able to sterilise your jars that you want to put your pickles or your jams in. And all I use is a pressure cooker. You can buy a pressure cooker um, from any uh, online store or at your local hardware and kitchen supply store. It's just a standard pressure cooker. There are lots of different types. You can go for extremely expensive ones with digital gauges and all sorts of devices on them. This is a very standard pressure cooker and what I'll be doing on my um, blog is that I will be reviewing a few of these um, from the basic models all the way up to those with all the bells and whistles, different sizes and different capacities from different manufacturers and we'll take a look at various different pros and cons for the different types of pressure cookers on there. Um, if you're not familiar with my blog site you can see the address down there at the moment on this video. It's www.picklesandjams.com So on with this at the, now. Uh, this as I said is a standard pressure cooker. Uh, this is the release valve and the lid comes off with a safety catch and push it forward and twist and that's the lid off and you will see inside is pretty much like a standard saucepan and all I do for ease of speed of going through the cycle because you don't want to take longer than is necessary with this um, is that I boil a kettle of water first because I want to put about an inch of hot water in the bottom of this uh, pressure cooker. So I've boiled some water over here in my kettle and I'm just going to put about an inch, maybe an inch and a half to two inches, it doesn't really matter as long as it's you know only a couple of inches deep in the bottom of this pressure cooker. Then I take my jars and I make sure that the jar is already scrupulously clean and dry and the most important thing is to make sure that the lid is slightly unscrewed. So the top is off now and just want to make sure what I do is I tighten it down and then I just crack it so as it's loose but check that I can that I can pick the jar up with it. Okay and then I place that as many as I can fit exactly like that tighten it off just crack it slightly as many as I can fit. I'm only going to do three here for this demonstration. My pressure cooker holds seven. Now, you know, you can get bigger and smaller pressure cookers that will hold, obviously, more or less, of, and obviously the size of the jar matters. And so, screw it down tight, just break it so as the seal is broken, and in it goes. Okay? The lid then is put back on. You have to line the arrow. They all have a an arrow uh, marked in the lid that lines up with the bottom handle here. You put that arrow to line up with the bottom handle and then just slide the two handles together. And you hear the click and that means that you've then got a seal around here. Now then, the trick 
you take off the um, release valve. This release valve is a weight, and all it does is it, it, is it sits there and stops the steam from being released out of this nozzle here once the thing is boiling, and it stops the steam to such an extent that it causes an even pressure of steam in here, hence the reason it's called a pressure cooker. And that even pressure in there just raises the temperature above boiling point to about 120 degrees centigrade, which is enough to kill off all of your organisms, all of your fungus, all of your bacteria and anything that's going to spoil your pickles and jams. So we take this off to start with because the first thing we want to do is get this on the stove and we want to expel all the air. We want to heat it up, you'll hear it boiling and the jars will clatter around inside and we want to leave it until there's a constant stream of steam coming out of this pipe which means all the air has come out of it and all we've got in there is steam. So let's get the stove going. I'm putting it on the largest ring to get the to get the maximum amount of heat in it to do this as fast as possible. And I just leave that on the stove now and we'll come back in a few moments to see what has happened to it and show you that there's steam coming out of the top there and you'll be able to hear it hissing. Okay, so I'll see you in a few moments, guys. Okay guys, I'm back now, and what you can see, or if you can't see, you can probably hear, there's a constant stream of steam now coming out of this nozzle, which means that all the air that was inside this chamber has been pushed out by the steam, and we've just got steam coming out of here. Also, the safety lock on this handle will have popped up, a little red button has popped up, show me that the handle is now locked and that I can't open the chamber and obviously school myself. So, what we do now is that we take the weight that we showed earlier and we put it firmly but carefully over the top of that nozzle. Now what that's doing is that's now preventing the steam from rising up and coming out of that nozzle and so that's making the pressure slowly but surely build inside this chamber and as the pressure builds so the temperature rises and it rises above 100 degrees there are a lot of bacteria and fungus fungi that produce uh, spores like little eggs that can survive over 100 degrees centigrade so it's no good just getting your jars and putting them in a uh, in some water and bubbling them away on the stove because those spores will survive and when you then put your jam inside your jars they'll germinate and lo and behold there will be your fungus on the surface. So this is now rising slowly, the pressure is building and building and you will see that what will happen is that this weight will eventually, and it's just starting to happen now, I can see uh, beneath it that there's a bit of bubbling, you will hear or see that that weight now, there it goes, is being pushed off of the top of that spout and so a small amount of steam is being released from around the side keeping this chamber a constant pressure keeping it a pressure that allows it to be about 120 degrees centigrade the temperature is too hot for any of the spores to survive so what we can do now is we can turn the stove down and I let that now bubble away for 10 minutes so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in 10 minutes time and I'm going to show you how we can quickly open this and turn it around fast uh, rather than letting it cool right down to room temperature so as we can put some more jars in and you know get the whole process moving at a reasonable speed. So I'll see you again in about 10 minutes time.